Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eloisa Yala, and I am the supervising immigration attorney here at Legal Aid Service of Collier County. Today, I have another chat with you about TPS Haiti and other new enforcement priorities. This will be a short webinar. It really is just a small update. Um, things move very quickly in immigration law. So um, though you saw me uh, recently, um, we're doing another one. And if things change again, then you'll see me again. So let's start with TPS Haiti. This is the most recent um, news regarding temporary protected status. So on May 22nd, um, Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas announced a new TPS designation for Haiti for 18 months. And I just wanna be clear here, this is a new designation. So it's totally different from the other TPS Haiti um, that has been currently in place for several years now since the earthquake in 2007. So it is not an extension of that. It is not um, a re-registration of that one. Rather, it's a new designation of TPS. So when they do this, this designation, they look at the current country conditions now, not from what happened back then. And so this means that everyone needs to re-register. So even though you had TPS before or in the prior years, now you need to redo it again and re-register. So it's important that you all know and that you all advocate uh, for everybody else and all the people that you know that are eligible to let them know that they need to re-register. It's not optional. If you want to have TPS, you need to re-register. Um, What else does it mean? Well, it means that there's a different date now. It means that um, for it's only eligible now for those who were here on, let me see, on Jan, wait, no, that's not it. Sorry, I apologize. So it means that it, it will be um, available to any Haitian national who was present in the United States as of May 21st, 2021. And again, I want to make point out the difference between the old TPS designation, which um, had a different date. That was only available to nationals who were here um, post of the earthquake. Now this is for anyone that was here on May 21st, 2021 in the United States. Um, so we're talking about a lot more people being eligible, not just the ones that had TPS before, but now a lot more people. So the question now is, let me go back to the PowerPoint, who is eligible? Let me. So of course, first you have to be a national of Haiti or a person uh, who last habitually resided in that designated country um, and doesn't have a nationality. In other words, um, you have to be um, a citizen of Haiti. Um, you have to be able to register for this new TPS designation within the registration period. At this time, we don't know when that registration period will be. The actual official Federal Register notice has not been published. Um, and so we don't know what time frame they will give. But that is one of the um, requirements is that for you to register during that time period. And you have to have been continuously present in the United States since May 21st, 2021. And of course, have been present here in the United States as of May 21, 2021. Um, there are some uh, barriers to being eligible, and that is a very factual case-by-case -case, um, analysis, and I invite you to apply for services if you're not sure if you qualify for TPS Haiti. And some of those uh, reasons that may make you ineligible could be um, having been convicted of a felony or two or more misdemeanors, um, 
or failing to file within the registration period, although there are some exceptions to that also, and um, being inadmissible under certain grounds, um, like for example, security related grounds. Um, so though rare, there are some reasons why may, it may make you ineligible. And again, if you have any reason to think you may not qualify for it, I invite you to apply for our services here and we will analyze your case and let you know. So how to apply, there are certain forms online that you have to fill out. Uh, you are entitled to a work permit, a work authorization card um, based on this. And there are fees related to that too. Um, I'm not gonna go into great detail with that. And so I'm just only gonna say again, you're welcome to please um, call our office and apply for our services and we will handle all that for you. And uh, we will apply for the TPS for you and your family. Um, and again, I just want to reiterate the fact that this is a new TPS designation. Um, and again, because the actual Federal Register notice hasn't been published, we don't know when the registration period is. That also means that if you call our office today, we can't file the TPS tomorrow, for example. Until that registration period opens, we can't actually file your TPS application. So though we are accepting phone calls um, to start the process of applying for our services and eventually apply for TPS applications, please be aware that no one right now, and don't be fooled by anyone else, no one can actually submit a TPS application because that registration period has not opened yet. And please be aware of that. And you may call our office if you have any other questions. We do have um, staff who speak Creole and we do have an interpreter line we, are also, we also invite clients to um, have their own interpreter and if that makes you more comfortable. So please be aware that we do make, um, it, we make, we do make it easier for you to um, apply for our services and have us help you. And so the next topic, which is also days, just came out just days ago, um, is the new enforcement guidelines and prosecutorial discretion. So this is this comes from an ICE memo um, coming from the Executive Office of the United States, i.e., the President, um, got, um, which issues guidelines to ICE in terms of um, who is a priority for removal enforcement and who's not, and also gives them um, guides in applying for prosecutorial discretion and who can be given prosecutorial discretion. So. And I will go into what prosecutorial discretion means. But first, let's start with the enforcement guidelines. So the memo pretty much sets out three categories um, of people who are considered a priority for enforcement of removal. That means if you fit under these three categories, they will make you they will make a priority to remove you if you if you are removable. So the first category is national security. And so this is for those people who have engaged in or are suspected of engaging in terrorism or espionage and those kind of um, national security issues. And the second category is border security. And so this, the, the memo says that um, those non-citizens who are apprehended at the border or a port of entry while attempting to unlawfully enter the United States on or after November 1st, 2020, or who were not physically present in the United States before November 1st, 2020. And those people um, who fit under that are considered a priority for ICE. And the third category is public safety. And that pretty much means, you know, if it's a person that has had been convicted of an aggravated, aggravated felony, has substantial criminal background, or um, has per participated in um, criminal street gangs or um, that kind of thing, um, are also considered a priority. So out of, out of those three categories, perhaps the most one um, that may affect most people is the second category, which is those who um, were not present here before November 1st, 2020. 
in other words, those who entered the United States through the border after November 1st, 2020. Um, and so it's it's what we consider a um, a last in first out kind of um, basis, as in you know the most recent entries are the ones that are going to be focusing on to make to enforce removal. Now, I just want to be clear that those that though those guidelines have been issued as to who's a priority, it doesn't mean that suddenly now I'm, they're not going to remove me. Suddenly they're not going to deport me. No, it does not mean that. It just means their focus is on that. However, it doesn't mean it just goes away for any of everybody else. And I just wanted to make that clear. And again, if you have any questions, I invite you to call our offices um, and apply for our services. Um, and now going into prosecutorial discretion, um, what we would call PD. So a few, several years ago under a different administration, PD was very, popular, was very hot. Um, it was a method of relief that us immigration attorneys um, during removal proceedings at the court were able to use to, to kind of put a hold on a removal proceeding for a person. And so um, ICE and their attorneys um, have the ability to exercise prosecutorial discretion in proceedings before the immigration court. Um, and I just want to mention that prosecutorial discretion is a long-standing authority of an agency charged with enforcing the law to decide where to focus its resources and whether or how to enforce or not to enforce the law against an individual. And again, it pretty much just means um, they'll have the ability to say, well, there are certain reasons why we won't remove you um, and why they will prioritize someone else. So though PD, prosecutorial discretion, is not an actual formal program or an actual benefit per se, um, it is a sort of method of um, uh, um, preventing the person of being um, removed at that time. So in, in the exercise of PD, in other words, um, attorneys representing ICE, um, in doing so and in deciding whether to grant prosecutorial discretion to someone, it pretty much um, is analysis of a total totality of the circumstances. So they're gonna be taking into account how long you've been in the United States, if you've been of service in the military <clears throat> or have family in the military, the method of how you entered the United States, whether with a visa or, or unlawfully through the border, um, um, your work history in the United States, uh, whether you don't have any criminal background or any law violations, uh, whether you have um, um, uh, US born children, whether you're the caregiver of a relative here in the United States, there's so many factors um, taken into consideration. And so that's what they will be looking for in deciding whether to grant PD or not. And some of the negative factors that they will take into account, again, will be especially criminal history. Um, if you participated in the persecution of other human rights violations, not compliance with conditions of release, if you break, if you're broken your bond before, um, how many times you've unlawfully entered through the border and material misrepresentation or fraud lying. Um, those are the kind of negative factors that will be taken in consideration. Now that I've gone through that, now I kind of want to mention how it really looks at the time in the court. And this is based on what was going on years ago. Doesn't mean it will happen the same way now. Um, so I'm only really going into this as to how PD was um, functioning years ago and how kind of what we going, we're going to go by and how it will be, it will be working now. So pretty much um, the person is placed in removal, they're in front of the judge. And so the attorney or your attorney will be asking the judge and ICE um, and the DHS attorney to grant you prosecutorial discretion. So it, it pretty much means it's a motion that's submitted. 
asking for this and numerating all the good things that I just mentioned, how long you've been here, that you have some USC children or a spouse, that you've been a good person, enumerating all those things. And um, then they will issue a decision. Okay, so let's say they do grant it. What does that mean actually for, for you in that removal proceeding? Well, it doesn't mean now they're just gonna let you go and no more court, right? It doesn't mean that um, they're gonna deport you anyway and now you can stay. It doesn't mean lots of things. So don't get confused. It really kind of just functions like a hold button in your removal proceedings. Um, you're still gonna be in a removal proceeding. It's just gonna be placed in a hold status. Once that PT is granted, it pretty much means, you know, for now, we're not gonna keep going with this. But it doesn't mean we won't in the future kind of thing. Um, while you have PD, you will be entitled to a work card authorization, so that's always good. How long that can last, we don't know. Um, how exactly it will work this time around, I can't say for sure. Um, but the important part is that we have this new guidelines and this new um, memorandums allowing us to um, try it out and see what happens. So. And I want you to know all this because I invite you to reach out to an attorney, whether it's our office or someone else, and see what are the options for you um, if you are in removal proceedings or not. And the more you, everybody is aware, the more the community is aware, the more we can help each other out. Again, and at the end of the day, it is very important that you seek legal representation before you do anything. Um, because everything really in immigration law is a case-by-case, facts-based analysis. Um, and it requires the knowledge of an attorney to be able to tell you, hey, yes, we can do this. No, we can't do this. Um, don't let a notario tell you otherwise. Don't let um, your, your neighbor, Bacino, tell you, oh, I did it, so, so, you, can, so you, you can do it too. It doesn't quite work that way. And again, remember our services at Legal Aid Service of Clear County are free. Uh, we have an entire immigration unit dedicated to helping immigrants in our community. And again, the minimum we can do is analyze your case and tell you, yes, we can do this or no, we can't. Um, so call our office and apply for our services and see you next time. Thank you.